What is good, everyone? This is your host, Deanna Radulescu with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. As always, very incredible guests from all over the world. So sit back, relax, and tune in. My next guest is a former corporate attorney, former law professor, and author of Tread Loudly, Call Out the Bullshit, and Fight for Equality in the Workplace. Please welcome Christine Cherick. Christine, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Uh, it's an honor to have you here. I've been following you on Instagram, watching <laughs> your pod tour, going all over the place, talking at universities and making an impact with your message. So I kind of want to talk a little bit about your background and being a corporate attorney, law professor, like the inspiration, because I, I think we already know <laughs> the inspiration <laughs> behind your book. Um, so, yeah, I'll let you sure. kick it off. Sure. Uh, a little bit about my background. I started practicing law at a big national law firm um, when I was 25. And at the time, I knew that there weren't a lot of women in positions of power. That was normal, not just at that firm, but at all big law firms. Uh, about less than 20% of the partners at the law firm nationwide uh, are were women at the time. Wow. But I thought that was really just, you know, I mean, shocking, but I thought, well, it's a matter of time. It's a pipeline yeah. problem as more women graduate from law school and enter the profession, we'll work our way up and it'll all be great. Uh, and it just didn't happen. It didn't happen at that firm, at another firm. I then went in-house uh, working for a national real estate development company. Great places, great firms, but we just didn't see women rising in equal numbers or really anywhere close to equal numbers. And so that was always something that bother me. And certainly, you know, those kind of male dominated, yeah, those male dominated workplaces came with some obstacles and some biases and things along the way that weren't great to deal with for a young woman. Yeah. So I always thought someday when I have time, I want to do something. I want to do something to at least bring awareness to hopefully help people, not just yeah. women, but people have a, a workplace culture that's a little more equitable, fair, and a place where everybody feels everybody feels comfortable. I, you know, and you know, not just women, men. And I realize those terms are really discrete and binary, and it doesn't cover the spectrum of people. Um, so if I use those terms, I don't mean to exclude anybody by any means. Uh, it's just a that's what the data is based on. So yeah. that's what I know. So that's a little bit about my background. I spent about twenty years practicing law and then teaching at a law school. And so as the end of that 20 year period was coming, my students were coming back after their first jobs and talking with me and telling me all these stories. Yeah. And it didn't sound very different from what I went through when I was their age. So that was the real spark to want to do something to bring awareness and make, make voices heard and just bring attention to the problem to the extent I could. So mm. that was that was the spark for the book. Isn't it unfortunate and discouraging that we are still in that place where women or people, all the whole spectrum of people, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to say mm. women because that's my generation. I'm not going into yes. all the different yes. downs and all that crap. But um, it's just unfortunate that people besides a typical male mm. and not easily arise. They're not given to the same opportunities as them. And I'm not like a man hater or anything like this. I believe in strong women. I believe in all that. But it's like we're in 2024 and we have still mm -hmm. yet to see massive growth within the corporate structure to support anyone mm -hmm. besides a, a male to get to rise in the ranks, especially when I'm you like yourself, I'm sure incredibly smart, savvy, and, you know, yeah. could, could go to go like to in ring <laughs> with the best of them. Right. And it's sure. just, I love having these conversations because, you know, that's why I can't do corporate because I will be, I will tread, I tread loudly. <laughs> that's why. Yes. My, Which is I, what we want you to do. <laughs> yes. But that's not very well received. And that's the problem. You know, you have someone who's has got a strong, strong mind, strong values, strong voice, and they don't want that because it's, it scares them. Mm -hmm. And and that's exactly why, by the way, your dog in the background is really cute. Uh, and that's exactly why we called the book Tread Loudly. And I talk a bit in the book about, you know, my generation, I'm Gen X. And 
we were sort of the bridge between the baby boomers who were these absolute trailblazers who were the first women in the workplace trying to survive in those madmen like um cultures which i don't know how they didn't yeah and kind of the, the bridge between that and today where we see people being more emphatic and loud and insisting on rights and equality but we were in i was in this middle ground where if i would have walked into the ceo's office and said this isn't right this isn't right if i would have written you know we didn't have social media but if i would have gone on tiktok and done videos about this yeah. is what's happening in my workplace i would have been uh, at best, maybe a troublemaker. I'm sure it would have affected my ability to rise. Uh, so we had to take these baby steps and try to make small changes and try to kind of fight for every inch. And so that's where the tread loudly comes from. I'm done treading lightly. I'm done being careful. I'm done trying to, you know, work within the system and not ruffle feathers. And now it's time to say it's 2024. Yeah. You know, it's it's been a long time that I've been living this this story and it's time for it to change. Yeah. So that's that's where this all comes from. Do you think being a lawyer in that environment with other lawyers, because lawyers are pretty like they can be pretty nasty, especially in the courtroom. <laughs> and so I, I would imagine it's probably even more cutthroat within a corporate structure. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because there were I think there are different layers of the issue of why women don't rise up in equal numbers or close to equal numbers as men. There's the obvious, you know, the the bad actors, the bias, the yeah. harassment, all of that. But I think there's a pretty small percentage, or at least in my experience, that was a pretty small percentage. And there are certainly things that happen and comments that were made and comments about your legs and, uh, you know, comments about, you know, all that kind of stuff. But the, by and large, most of the guys that I worked with, they didn't intend for there to be some kind of disparate impact on women. It just, that's the way the structure was. Right. And, you know, there were just certain built-in things that it made it easier for guys in that kind of workplace. But yes, there are certainly, you know, there's certain cutthroat nature and competitiveness. Uh, among attorneys you know it's what you do for a limit you you win or you lose right in a courtroom and so people are used to winning or losing and so i'm sure that brought some additional cutthroatness for lack of a better word uh to my life um but certainly by and large the, most of the guys that i knew weren't there to say you know women shouldn't be here or anything like that it was just the system worked to their advantage and they by and large, didn't even realize that I was at a disadvantage. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's just, and here we talk about just real quick, being label free, the labels that are yes. put on women that that we've had for an eternity that we are are not capable, we're not, um, or we're too emotional, you know, all those different things that come with being a woman, being labeled yeah. a, a, with all those things. Exactly. And there's data, actually, uh, there's a global consulting firm called McKinsey and Company that some of your listeners are probably familiar with. And they every year do a deep dive into the status of women in corporate America and trying to identify what's happening to give us the numbers to let us know this is this is irrefutable. Numbers don't lie. There's, these are how many women are in different percentage by a percentage basis in yeah. positions of power across corporate America. But one of the really interesting things that I think ties into the label free part is the reasons cited for why women leave the workplace or change jobs or take a job that's um, maybe not as high of a level as where they were. And the one of the primary reasons is because of all those perceptions that you mm -hmm. just mentioned. It's women, women are reporting that their voices aren't taken seriously. Um, they're talked over in meetings. They're constantly interrupted. They're told they're too emotional. Those exact yeah. words. Uh, they're told they're uh, too bossy or too aggressive. They get these comments on their performance reviews. You know, basically they're categorizing you as like being a loud, bitchy person yep. who, oh, sorry for, sorry for sorry. Oh, it's okay. No, no, it's all right. You're, but that's the truth though. And it, you know, it's like we've come so far as a society I and mean, we were we're dealing with AI that's writing stuff for people and creating things for people. 
But yeah, we shouldn't get away from these labels that have been put on women for a lifetime. And it's like, why did that stop? And so what if we're emotional? And so so what? Who cares? And why would that? And maybe that's a good thing. Yeah. Why did it prevent me from doing a good job? It doesn't. It's just part of my my genetic makeup that, yeah, we might be a little bit more emotional, but who the fuck cares? Sorry. sorry. Exactly. No, go for it. It's there's hey, there's the word bullshit's in the title of my book. So it's <laughs> it, that's my lingo. But it but it's very true. And if for so long we have these perceptions, you know, I when I started work um and was starting to build my career, I a, about a year in, people were just figuring out who I was. I got married. Mm-hmm. And I had another thought, one. Gosh. Yeah, I, I got married and I thought, gosh, people are finally knowing who I am. I'm yeah. just finally feel like I have this reputation. So I didn't change my name. And that yeah. is in a back where I've been married 25 years now, back 25 years ago, that was really unusual. It's a little more common now, but I get this. Well, why not? Like, why didn't you change your name? Yeah. Well, I like my name. I'm proud of my family. I'm proud of my heritage. So I chose not to abandon all of that. It's a personal decision, but I get a lot of questions about something as simple as, why is your husband's last name different than yours? Mm. Well, because that's my personal decision. But there's a lot of judgment in that, you know, that people impose upon one's We're not being married. Oh, she can't take her. We're not being married. So she's not, exactly. she, she's not married. She's not really committed. So if you're married, you're more committed and you're more you're more apt to be taken seriously. Like the stigma is just so crazy. Anyways, let, let's move on. Um, as a, you're a former <laughs> law professor. So I, I'm curious with all the experience that you had and in going into teaching, you know, upcoming lawyers, like, mm-hmm. were you talking about your experience as a woman in the workplace and how you were not given the same opportunities? That's a great question. I At the beginning, I didn't talk about that, mm-hmm. uh, partly because I thought my job is to teach the law. My job is to teach students the academic stuff that they need to know. Uh, but then as I think some of my students got to know me better and started coming into my office and chatting and asking, well, how did you handle this or how did you handle that? Uh, then I started telling kind of on a one-off basis stories that had happened or my perception or all this stuff that we're talking about today and they would kind of you know hang on the edge of their seats like tell me more tell me more yeah so it was then that I realized I I'm not there just to teach the law the facts and the law and the cases and what they need to know to go into a courtroom to argue or to draft a contract but they need to know how to navigate this world real so, world stuff yeah. Real world stuff, real yeah. world stuff. And you're not always going to be taken seriously. Um, so I would tell my students in the classroom uh, of these little stories. I, I remember working on the other side. Um, my client was doing a big business deal with the other attorney's client, and he was a much, much older guy mm-hmm. who had this tendency to call me, you know, young lady or all of these patronizing little terms and I just let him think I was stupid. Yeah. And I just let him go with his assumptions. And I would tell my students the story semester after semester then. And sometimes what makes you different, sometimes that's your secret weapon. So here's this, you know, guy who is long past when most people retire still practicing law, still with all these assumptions about how women aren't capable or good enough or smart enough and treating me like I was his granddaughter uh, rather than someone he was doing a business deal with. And I just let him think it yeah. because then he wasn't going to catch all the little things that I was able to get negotiated into a contract. He thought he never, ever imagined I was smart enough to do that, that- but I did. Yeah. So that must be a lot of people like that. Good for you <laughs> for letting it roll on your view and like you kind of not letting it bother you so you can let him think and his little, you know, that's probably his generation, you know, like their yeah. idea on women and oh, oh my gosh, can this, this young woman is being an attorney and trying to, to but you kind of got over on him, you know. Exactly. <laughs> I love that. Exactly. 
And I thought, I'm just going to let him think I can't do this. And the more he underestimates me, the less careful he's going to be about reading and, and negotiating and adding. So when I'm putting, when I'm drafting this contract and it's 50 pages and I'm putting in all the stuff that I want my client to have, he never would have imagined I was smart enough to do that. So he didn't catch it. Someday he, he someday I'm sure he did. Uh, in the back end after his client realized they didn't get such a good deal. So yeah. that was my way of quietly paying back that scenario. Wow, I love it. That's a great example of how to rise above the situation and just to like let it roll off of you because I think that and this is a good example of a strong woman in a position that can doesn't have to let those things bother her. Though I love that. I love that. Hi guys, this is your host, Deanna Radulescu with Label Free Podcast. I'm here to share another exciting partnership with you. I have joined forces with doTERRA. They are the leading provider of high quality essential oils. I've got some here I like to consume, the ones that are consumable. So like sweet orange is really great. I also really, really love their toothpaste. Natural whitening and just kind of really helps clean your mouth. You know, we do carry a lot of germs in our mouth, but I've loved the toothpaste. I've ordered it many times. These are some supplements. Here is the Lifelong Vitality Pack. Really great products, high quality products. Definitely recommend it. I also really love the collagen. NMN is a proven anti-aging product. So the collagen and the NMN together is a real game changer. I'm big into collagen. I believe it. I've been taking it for like 20 years before it's even gotten so popular. And that's probably why I maintain my skin elasticity, my hair and nails. I highly recommend checking out doTERRA if you're a fan of high quality essential oils. Not all essential oils are created the same. Go click the links in the descriptions, sign up or take advantage of one of my bundles that I'm recommending to you with, with the toothpaste also the cleaning products and the supplements. So you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We really appreciate you and stay tuned for more to come. Tread yes. loudly, call out, call out the bullshit and fight for equality in the workplace. I love this. I love this so much. You guys who are watching, you can see the book on her. Or, oh, do you have yeah. one? Oh, I, 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 I have one. There you go. To me as well. I love it. So love here's the book. Too. Thank you. And yes, it's on the bookshelf behind me along with some, some, gear that we had made a uh, cool. book title yeah so, yeah we wanted i wanted the book to be really visual and bright and strong but also I, it has to be pink it has to be yeah. pink because talk about label free you know what do we do as soon as we are invited to a baby shower is it a boy or a girl girls get pink boys get blue so to me you know pink symbolized girliness and femininity and womanhood and all of that. And I wanted to say, yeah, I, I, I do it all the time. I saw the cake in your class. <laughs> and I wanted to say, okay, that label that people put on you, that you're this delicate, sweet, quiet, little baby girl, that can also be really strong and really fierce and bold. Yeah. So we punched up the color pink on the cover of the book to make that point. I love that. I think it makes a definite statement. And it'll, it kind of tells people, tells women or people that you can be feminine and strong at the same time. Absolutely. And and that's the point of, well, one of the points of the book. Yeah. Uh, it's really to, to be hopefully some inspiration to people, not just women, but to people yeah. to say, you know, embrace who you are, embrace what makes you different and unique. And how boring would the world be if we were all the same? Oh, my God. Yeah. So what makes you different makes you great and it's your strength. And instead of, I think I spent a lot of years trying to fit into this mold of this corporate world and tell, I never would have had, you know, bright pink fingernails or jewelry or earrings. I just wanted to fit into this world where I look just like all the guys in their dark suits. And oh, so fun. the second half, of, you know, no, that's no fun. <laughs> it is no fun. So the second half of my life is all about being bold and wearing the the clothes I want and the earrings I want and the jewelry that I want and the right fingernails or whatever it is, the house meals to say you can do all of that yeah. uh, because that's who you are and you won't be happy unless you really embrace who you are. And that's what I love so much about your podcast. It's it's letting people be their whole selves and proud to be their whole selves. Yeah, and have and and showing that 
being who you are does not stop you from being intelligent, smart, compassionate, kind, you know, Ooh. like gotten through trauma. I mean, all these things, like your new, unique makeup and your unique life experience does not prevent you or should ever hold you back from living, standing in your truth. And, and exactly. deserving, deserving the same kind of respect that anyone else, specifically, we'll just say men, do get on this planet. Yes. So um, yes. I love it. Who would this book? True. Who would the book be perfect for? I know we mentioned like women, but it's. I think that the message of the book is really great for anyone. But like anyone might, who would be going through something that this would really benefit right now? Um, I I wrote it in part for my nieces. Oh. Uh, so I have seven nieces plus yeah. three young ladies who call me Aunt Christine, even though they're not technically related to me they're my two best friends daughters Aww. and yeah and but so the youngest of uh of the girls is 18 the oldest is 33 okay so we really hit the gen z millennial category pretty hard in my family and at the outset that's who i thought my audience really was because i wanted to get to these young women early frankly mm -hmm. in their in their professional world to say don't wait to be who you are. Be who you are today. Yeah. But the more that I wrote and the more that I had my friends read snippets and the more that now that I'm going to do some events at different corporations and things like that, I am getting lots of women yeah. in their 40s, 50s uh, telling me, I read your book shaking my head. Yes, yes, that yeah. happened to me too. That happened to me too. So... It really, I think, has two audiences. Um, the the women who are in the early stage of their careers or even still in college, thinking about what their careers might look like and where they might go. And also people in, in my age category who have been there and experienced it. Yeah. But I think my favorite response so far, and I have to give a plug to my mom, who there's a lot of tributes to my mom in the book. Love it. So my mom lives in a senior facility in Wisconsin. And she keeps telling all the ladies that she plays all these card games with about how her daughter wrote a book. And so she started lending out her copy. Oh, and it's so it's so she has saved for me uh, the cards or thank yous because they all still do handwritten cards. They don't just yeah. text her. And she has you know one of her friends who is 80 some years old wrote this card to her. That said, you know, I'm so glad that your daughter wrote this book. I just yeah. wish she would have written it 50 years sooner when I was working. Oh, and I mean, you know, her, here, I, it was just, it was oh. so neat to, you know, to have someone in that age category read it and enjoy it. So I think different, different people take different, different bits of information and enjoy different parts of it. I love that. With that being said, Gussie, where can people find you, connect with you and purchase the books? The book absolutely uh you can find me i'm i would say most active on instagram you can find me and my personal name at k cherick it's k-c-h-e-r-e-k -E -E also my instagram i have one for my book tread loudly and um, i'm on facebook too although less active and linkedin under my actual real name christine cherick and i also have a website which is www.christinecherick.com and we'll make sure you get all those links you can buy the book anywhere. It's available on Amazon. Uh, there's also a great website, if you aren't aware, called bookshop.org. Oh, okay. That sources. Yeah, so so it's an attempt for indie bookstores to compete with the Amazons of the world. So it's an organization that if you go on bookshop.org and say, I want to purchase Tread Loudly, you can designate your favorite indie bookstore and they get a uh, percentage of the, of the profits from the sale of the book. Yeah, and so that's a cool one too. And it's on Barnes and Noble and airport bookstores. So if anyone's traveling through most major cities, um, from New York to Jersey to Detroit to Minneapolis, LAX, Austin, Charlotte, you name it, uh, hit your hit your Hudson stores and other airport bookstores, and you'll find it there as well. I love it, you guys. And put those links in the show notes. So if you connected with Christine's message. And I uh, want to support her or learn more. Go ahead and click the links. Go follow her on social and go purchase the book. Let's tread loudly. We do not yes. have to tread quietly. 
We are here to live. We only have one life to live. So be as loud as you fucking want to. <laughs> Absolutely. I love that. That is the perfect message for the book. Be yourself, be your whole self, and tread loudly. Well, I was going to ask you for last words of wisdom or advice. Is that what you're going to leave us with? Or do you want to leave us with something else? <laughs> I'll, uh, last words of wisdom or advice. Absolutely. The label free, be yourself. Don't try to contort yourself to fit into some other world or someone else's expectations. It won't make you happy. You won't find peace there. No. The only way that you'll find that kind of true happiness and peace and sense of self is if you be true to who you are and take risks and be bold and do whatever feels right to you. So that would be my final advice. Tread loudly in all aspects of your life and make no apologies for who you are or what you want. Yes, I love it. With that being said, Christine, thank you so much for you. sharing your journey with us and stepping out and being a voice for women that need to hear it and that we can put them on a path to finding who they are and not being afraid of using their voice and standing in their truth, right? And I think it's absolutely beautiful. Yes. I'm a fan. I love it. I'm going to continue to watch you on Instagram and all your stuff and going out there spreading the word. So thank you so much for being you. such a dynamic. Thank person. you. Thank you so much too. And keep doing what you're doing. You're, you're helping a lot of people see that there isn't just one way to lead life. Amen. Thank you for that. You guys, this is your host, Deanna Radalescu with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. As always, don't forget to subscribe, follow, rate, review, comment, share, all those good things. And I'll be back soon with more dynamic guests.